I just finished writing the prequel, which I had really kind of kicked and screamed about because I, I didn't know how I was going to do it. And it turned out to be, I'm very happy with how it turned out, but it was the most challenging book to write. All right, we're excited to welcome Nicholas Sansbury Smith to the Den of Geek interview studio at New York Comic Con. Uh, thank you for coming in. Nick, is this your first Comic Con? Uh, no. And first off, thanks for having me. This place is amazing. I uh, actually launched Helldivers 1 in 2016 at San Diego Comic Con. Um, and I'd been to New York Comic Con actually before that for another series. My first series it was called Orbs with Simon and Schuster way back in the day. Can you tell us a little bit about the inspiration behind Helldivers and, you know, kind of how it came to life and, and the original inspiration? Yeah. So in 2014 was when I first started writing Helldivers as like a side project, basically on the nights uh, on on nights and weekends when I had free time. Um, uh, I just uh, read Wool by Hugh Howey. And back then, uh, there was a ton of stories about people living underground. Like it got really popular and I was starting to think, um, how can I put a spin on this? How can I make something unique? And then I, so I thought, why not in the sky? And I did some research back then. The, the U.S. military was actually starting to experiment with airships. And you've probably seen in the news, like there's floating cities now. These, this is going to be a reality, not only for civilians, like cruise ships and whatnot, but also military ships. So um, came up with that kind of idea. And then I realized, okay, we got to keep these ships in the air somehow, especially after the apocalypse. So that's where I came up with the idea of hell divers. And hell divers are men and women that are either engineers or military um, uh, members, or some of them are like thieves. They're conscripted into service, and they dive down to the surface, scavenge through this apocalyptic world, and then take the parts back up to the skies and um, keep their airships going. So that's that was really the idea, and it just expanded. I never thought it would go beyond one book. I thought it was just gonna be on an airship and it turned out now I've explored Australia. The, the divers have been all over the world. So Africa, it's really, it's pretty expansive. For anyone listening that's maybe unfamiliar with hell divers, how would you describe the world and, and the characters that inhabit it? Um, it's a very dark world. Uh, I've added quite a bit of humor into the series to kind of, um, take away from the bleakness of it but it's also a beautiful world in the sense like there's a lot of uh, mutated flora and fauna and all sorts of creatures that have uh, become that have basically evolved to live in this world so it's 250 years after the apocalypse is and the characters are all, pretty much all hell divers and some of the support staff on these airships but it, later on in the series i'll try not to give spoilers but they f do find places where people have survived on the surface too and places where the sun does shine because essentially the whole world has been um darkened by these geomagnetic storms um, that block out the sun. So it's a cold, dark, scary world. Hell divers have a life expectancy. I think it is like nine jumps. And the main character starts off in book one as he survived 96 jumps. So it's tough. And not to spoil anything, but he continues to live on from those jumps. Oh, yeah. If, if yeah. I'm correct. <laughs> yep. I remember um, in the very beginning when this book was being pitched to publishers, I think one of them responded like, we know that the main character dies at the end, which because I do, it's it's a cliffhanger ending, but yeah, spoiler, the character does survive and he his nickname becomes the mortal uh, because he just, you can't kill him. You were saying before we interviewed that, you know, you, you obviously had not expected for this to go to 12 books. You didn't right. know that that was going to happen, but did you have a, a kind of character arc for, for X and, and how did that develop over time from the first book to the fifth book to the 12th book? Yeah, I, you know, I kind of left him hanging in the sky in book one and I didn't really, so I've, I've actually gone back and rewritten some of this stuff. And, um, I was telling you about a novella I wrote two years ago. And so basically what happens between book one and book two and three, um, I didn't really explain what happened to X. So, and it, this goes into spoilers too, but I decided after all these readers uh, throughout the years wanted to know um, and how he found his dog, Miles, which is another popular character. So I went back and wrote 
how he found Miles, how he got down to the surface. And so some of this has come later. Um, I mean, we're talking 10 years after I wrote that first scene in book one, where I didn't really know what was going to happen to him. So yeah, some of it I had planned, some of it I didn't. Definitely didn't have 12 books planned. Um, I just finished writing the prequel, which I'd really kind of kicked and screamed about because I, I didn't know how I was going to do it. And it turned out to be I'm very happy with how it turned out, but it was the most challenging book to write um, in this series. So, Can you tell us a little bit more about the prequel and, and yeah. kind of where you see that going in yeah. the future? So that will probably be the – not the next book. The next book will be a spinoff of another favorite character, fan favorite. But the prequel is – it takes place the 250 years before book one. So it's it's how the world ends. And I think it's really topical because um, – this is kind of a spoiler, but um, – the, the world ends because of AI. And right now, obviously, AI has never been more more topical, right? So I I really used a lot of uh, research and into how I think AI can... And, it, and there's some twists and stuff, so I won't say it's necessarily AI, but AI does play a part in it. And um, the main problem was <laughs> in book four of the series, I wrote how the world ended finally. There's a lot of suspense on no no one knows on these airships how the world ended. It's been 250 years and they've they've written it out of their history because of how scary it is on the surface. They don't want people to know what's down there. Um, so I basically had two lines in book four on how the world ended, and I had to write the prequel book based off those two lines. So it was challenging, but it came together really well, and I'm excited for to share this with readers because they're really the ones that convinced me to write the book. I I just wasn't sure how honestly how to do it so I did it it took me six months and I finished the edits on the plane yesterday so it will be coming soon that's really exciting are there any other stories that you've been you know dreaming to to tell outside of the Helldivers story arc um within the world you mean no oh, outside just, of the world actually like is uh, there anything beyond that in the future that that you're interested in or, or is it right now to, to focus oh, on on hell divers yeah i've i mean i have two other series going right now that are not hell divers related um i have a I, i'll pitch this as grumpy old men in space uh two space marines that are retired living on a backwater planet with their dogs and they get sucked back into service um uh, to fight an alien, ancient alien race that only these two guys have survived. Um, so that's something I'm really excited about writing. I, I always have ideas. I just don't have the time to, you know, I think a lot of authors feel that way. They're always moving on. And But Helldivers is the one series, I think I was saying, that I love writing. I've never gotten sick of it, and I would continue writing it, I think, if, if the stars align and um, – it's just really fun. I love the characters. They feel like real people. Wow, Nick, that, that's that's incredible. Um, I would love to meet a, a real hell diver someday. Yeah, I would too. These guys feel like friends, so maybe maybe we can uh, see one here. I don't know. Really? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Look at this. We have a, a real life hell diver in the flesh, Arlo. From what what books uh, is Arlo? Books in? six and seven. Yeah, he's a fan favorite. So thanks for coming, Arlo. Looking pretty. I dive so you can survive. Yeah, we dive so humanity survives. I really think that like sticks stuck with me. Um, where did that come from? Did that just come to you? At that was a quote that I came up with, and um, it just stuck. And I, I think people really at first I was like, this, this is cheesy or is it cool? And it ended up being I think pretty cool. And the, the divers say it in every book, and yeah, it's it's stayed with them. So it was one of those. Mo I always try to come up with a motto for each book, and this one really was if it, it fit. I felt like. Writing, um, writing a series this long, do you have any advice for young writers that, you know, have a dream of, of writing a series this long or, or really just looking to start? What, what would your advice be to, to young sci-fi writers? I think write what you enjoy um, reading and writing because uh, readers will be able to tell. For me, I've always loved the apocalyptic genre. Uh, that's just what I've always read, what I've always written in. And so it came, it didn't come natural, but I think come, try to come up with an idea that is unique and that you can put a spin on and that interests you because if it interests you, it's more than likely going to 
interest the readers. And um, the other thing that I tell uh, authors a lot that are asking me for advice is try to write every day because it's like anything. I mean, I've written millions and millions of words now, and a lot of those get scrapped, but some of them make it into the books, and um, it takes practice. So, I mean, I honestly did not know how to craft a novel when I first started. Uh, my first novel never made it to the light of day, and the next one, it got easier and easier and easier, and now um, you'll, you'll create a process eventually that will work for you, I think, so. That's incredible advice. I mean, I can't thank you enough for, for coming and giving thank us you such so a much. great interview. And obviously, if you want to hold up the book here, Helldivers, um, go buy the first one, the 12th one. Um, so again, thank you, and thank you to Arlo. Here are our Helldiver in the flesh here at New York Comic Con studio at Den of Geek. Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.